Hey everyone, so the next video that we're going to do is the factors that affect enzyme activity. And we're going to be talking about two ways to affect enzyme activity. We're going to be talking about the permanent way and the non-permanent way. Um, so let's get started with your permanent way. Um, and the way that you can affect enzyme activity is by denaturing the, um, the enzyme itself. Um, there are several ways to denature an enzyme. Uh, understand that by denaturing, we mean changing the shape. And of course, if you change the shape, you change the function. And in this case, it will no longer function. So we talk about pH, we talk about temperature, uh, we talk about ion, con uh, ion concentrations. This can include salt. And one of the key things that you guys need to know about enzyme activity um, is being able to interpret graphs either with temperature or with pH. So we're going to do just a quick sketch of both of them. If this is my enzyme activity, this could be either the enzyme product or the substrate breakdown or the product production. Um, and if this is pH, each enzyme will have an optimum pH or the best pH to work at, um, and enzyme activity is going to be dependent on where this enzyme is located. So we talked about how in the stomach, the optimum pH, that would be 2, but if it's uh, something that's more uh, working in a basic environment, then this opti optimum pH will definitely be higher at around um, 8 or possibly 9, depending on the enzyme and where it's located. Also talk about temperature and how temperature affects enzyme activity. Um, and usually what happens with these ones, again, you have your optimum, which is where the enzyme is most active, and that temperature is going to depend on the type of organism. So with enzyme or with temperature, it's important that you guys need to know that here you have an increase in kinetic energy which is the energy of uh, motion in the molecule. So you're increasing the likelihood of these molecules colliding. And then on this side over here, this is where you have bonds that are starting to break, uh, particularly some of those individual weak bonds like hydrogen bonds. Um, and so with temperature, you see a much, much narrow range. And again, it depends on the organism and where the enzyme um, functions on what that optimum T uh, temperature is going to be. The second way that we're going to talk about factors that affect enzyme activity um, are the non-permanent ways. Um, so we uh, covered in class, we talked about competitive inhibition. Okay, and remember the thing about competitive inhibition, your active site is blocked. We talked about non-competitive with that allosteric regulator. Your active site is not blocked, but the, 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 the allosteric regulator um, changed the shape of the enzyme so the substrate no longer fits with non-competitive inhibition. Um, and then ways to either decrease or increase uh, enzyme activity um, and also include cofactors. These are um, inorganic enzyme helpers, so they can help enzymes function better. You also have coenzymes. Coenzymes are gonna be organic enzyme helpers. Um, so all of these are factors that will affect the enzyme activity, depending on whether or not you're talking about a permanent change or a non-permanent change. You need to be able to tell the difference between these two. I hope this video helps.